Good morning. Uh, well, I have a little bit of an issue and you guys are gonna come along with me. As some of you guys might know, I have rental properties and that's pretty much my full-time job. And at five o'clock this morning, the power went out at one of my apartments and there's a sump pump that is not powered right now. And of course it's raining. This just happened a couple months ago and the power is out for a few hours. Sump pump wasn't running and the, the whole basement flooded. So uh, it's about six o'clock right now. I gotta get some tools together and uh, I have to go to Harbor Freight and buy an inverter. If you watched my previous video from like last year, I used my car to power things here at the house. I returned that inverter, unfortunately. So I do have to wait until Harbor Freight opens up at eight o'clock, quickly install another inverter in this car and we're gonna power that sump pump. The timing, of course, is horrible. All of this rain that we've been getting has just been insane. So I'm gonna to have to go get this. Caleb's gonna to have to come with me. He usually goes to school while I work, but I can't drop him off and get all the stuff and get over there and power the pump before it floods again. So Caleb's gonna be coming with me and probably spending the day with me. So I thought I'd take you guys along because it's gonna be kind of cool how I can power the sump pump off of my Toyota RAV4 Prime. Uh, it's crazy, I've had this car for a year already. I, I do plan on some more videos, like a year update and everything. So that'll be coming out at some point, I'll get that done. But, but for now I gotta go buy this inverter, install it, drive over to the house, run power to the sump pump and get it all running <laughs> before it floods. So here we go. Well, I can't find the cables I used last time to connect the battery to the inverter, but I have these cables from my old RAV4 parts car. So I'm gonna use these. These are gonna be plenty big. Uh, I think it's like a four out cable. Uh, there's no fuse, but the battery cable's so big that I think it'll be okay. I mean, not ideal. I definitely should have a fuse, but yeah, so I'm going to use these. I have a pretty thick 120 volt extension cable there. I forget what that is, but I think it was either 10 or 12 gauge for the AC side. So that'll be fine. Uh, I have access to the battery already right there. So just getting this stuff together, I just thought it was funny that I happen to have these cables that have the ring terminals on the end and they're just should be perfect. Well, we both just got to Harbor Freight. We have to wait for them to open. It's uh, 7.52, so we have eight minutes until they open. Tenants have already texted me and they said that the water is starting to back up. Uh, this just really sucks. I, this is, again, the second time this has happened. NYSEG is our local provider for our electricity and I don't know what the deal is, but we keep losing power in that area. And anytime we lose power, we don't have a sump pump that works and we've just had so much rain on the way over here we passed some creeks and they were just overflowing with water just there's nowhere for the water to go it's just been such a wet year so a few minutes to kill uh caleb's eating a bagel and then we'll run inside grab the inverter install it and then it's going to be about another 40 minute drive to get over to my apartment and I'm really crossing my fingers that we can do all this before anything worse happens and it really backs up and gets flooring wet. Wish me luck. All right, awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You gotta be quick though. All right, just bought it. I'm here still in the parking lot and I'm gonna hopefully install this really quick, make sure it all is working and then get over to the house as soon as I can before any more flooding happens. All right, we've got it all connected. Light is on, so it is working. That's good. These cables worked out absolutely perfect. Cable, watch out for that screwdriver on those terminals. Uh, so that's only 12 volts, but uh, yeah. And these cables fit right on that battery perfectly. They look tight. Um, because I had to disconnect the 12 volt battery, I might have lost power to the car. Let me go check that out. Might have to change some settings or something. Let's see. Uh, just talking to a camera and we're gonna head out here in a minute. 
Um, can't tell yet. Uh, either way, uh, I got to get rolling. Uh, so I'm going to get him in his car seat and we'll head out on the road again. Well, I just got a text update from my tenant and the carpets are starting to get wet. So it's not good. This is very frustrating. And of course, of all days, of all times, there are cars in front of me, a whole line of cars doing 40 in a 55. So this is just taking forever. I still have 21 minutes to get there and get everything set up and get the pump going. The inverter is a 2000 watt uh, continuous and 4000 peak. And the sump pump that I'm going to be powering is, I think it's a half horse, but I'm really just not sure. Um, but that should be around, I think about 1800 watts continuous-ish. Uh, it could have a, a big spike when it turns on, but I think once it turns on, it's probably gonna be running nonstop. So as long as I can get it started, then I think it'll be fine with this inverter. But the other thing, in case you guys don't follow my channel, last year when I tested this with a bigger inverter at my house, that, that one, I think it was a 5,000 watt inverter. You can go back and you can watch that video too. But in that video, I found out that the DC to DC converter inside this car, uh, which if, in case you don't know, what that does is take the high voltage battery power from the high voltage battery pack, the, the drive pack, and converts that to 12 volts DC for the car's battery pack. And that's only 1500 watts, if I remember correctly. It, it might have gone up to like 2000, but I think it was 1500 watts. So this 2000 watt inverter will be fine. I don't think I'll be drawing too much power, but it is a possibility that if I'm drawing too much power, more power than the DC to DC inverter can deliver, then it's possible I could drain my 12 volt battery because it's not getting recharged fast enough. Like in a normal car, you would have an alternator. A DC to DC converter is uh, basically the same exact thing just for electric cars. So that's the update. Now I'm stuck in a traffic light. Uh, really need to get rolling here. I know the drain's there, but it's not going anywhere because everything, the ground is just so wet. Good thing you got your rain boots. Rain and no power. Daddy. Yeah. Why is hey, come on in. All right, close this door. Why is this water not going down that drain? Because the ground's too wet. So it is running, so that's good. Oh yeah, the basin is empty, that's nice. You want to look in here, buddy? Okay. Okay, let's see. That's where the water comes in. That's smart. That's a good shovel to use. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I get the most of on here, the fastest. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thank you. Oh, no! <laughs> I missed. That'll happen. <laughs> So 
wet. Looks like the inverter's working great. It has a little power level gauge on the side over here. And every minute or so, when the pump turns back on, it uh, goes up. Yep, there it goes. So it spikes up almost to the top, but then settles off right there in the middle. Daddy. Then it'll go down again, but it's not even warm at all. Yeah, these cables are not not even close to being warm. So that's all working great. Um, I'm definitely going to keep this one just for uh, emergencies like this. But if you want to do this, you just get some good sized cables, route them right directly to your battery that's right there. I have lots of space under here. Well, I have space because I took out the spare tire. So you could do the same and put it down here. There actually is quite a bit of space under here. Uh, if you remove everything, there's a piece of plastic, and right back there would be a great spot for it. But then you wouldn't have access to all the plugs quite as easily. Uh, you can get like a just a power strip maybe and bring it over here. So that right here, that's, that's what you could do. But yeah, at least it's up. It's running. We're gonna be here for a while because that sump pump's gonna have to pump out all that water. Well, this has turned out to be an absolute clusterfuck. Uh, tenants are pissed, understandably. They were cool to me about it the last time it happened, but yeah, I'd be pissed too. So I have the pump connected. Still no power here in this whole neighborhood, this whole area. I can't leave because my car is powering the pump. So I can't go out, get vacuums, dehumidifier, or not that I could connect all that to this car anyway. We have to wait until power comes back to do anything anyway. But then Caleb had a major meltdown and uh, I had to have his grandparents come pick him up. Um, it would have been okay if I could have given him the tablet, given him something to watch. We don't like doing that, but we could do that on occasion. But for some reason, the cell phone towers in this area aren't working either. So it's literally a perfect storm where it is just raining, no power, no cell phone coverage. I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs because I can't leave and can't do anything. Cell phone won't load. Fun morning. Uh, the joys of being a landlord. <laughs> and now I'm just sitting here waiting for the local electricity provider to turn power back on. That's it, but hopefully this helps you guys. Don't be a landlord. It's really just, it's crazy. Uh, a lot of work. And it's always, always at the worst possible time. Always. But the car is providing power. So that's at least one thing that's working and one thing that's awesome. Car has been great. Been loving the RAV4 Prime. But that's it for now. At some point I'll do some more videos. But that's it for this update. See you guys.